Hey guys, welcome to a, another episode in my tips and strategies. Uh, I'm actually going to show two games. The second video is actually an older video that I made a while back, and I just I I've never put it up. But uh, it was a uh, a game I had played actually well before the the, the 1.0 release. Um, uh, so it was a while ago. But it, in that episode or in that game, uh, th th there were a couple mistakes. It's just kind of worth noting. Um, that some that a, one player in particular did, um, so I kind of wanted to get it up, and I just kind of want to get rid of that video. I've, I've I've had it for so long, so we're gonna basically make this uh, this game play uh, really short and sweet. Um, try to keep this one under ten minutes. So in this game, uh, I end up running down into this area because I end up seeing a uh, uh, an airdrop. And from the airdrop, uh, I'm able to get, um, let's see if it's there yet. Mm, nope. Uh, I'm able to get the MK sniper rifle. Uh, I get a ghillie suit, uh, level three helmet, level three vest. So, uh, I end up grabbing all this stuff and I usually do not go for airdrops. I don't make it a priority. Uh, and the reason is because I, I usually come out on the short end uh, of going for an airdrop. Uh, I'm either too late and I end up getting taken out or I'm too early and I get the stuff and then somebody else who's coming in uh, is able to get me down as I'm running away from the crate. So I try to avoid them uh, when I can. Uh, but at this time you can tell there is nobody around me so I'm able to get to it so like I said we're gonna go really quick to the end of this game and um, kinda show everything where we're at there's 15 people left at this point now in this game based on where I was and where the plane came in I wasn't around anybody in this game I I don't even really see anybody except a couple people uh, and I take like one or two shots at somebody uh, who's over on this side. Uh, I don't get them down. Uh, so I don't even really engage anybody until we're down to four people. And a lot of that was based on me sort of taking advantage of the position that I was in because there was nobody around me. Uh, at this point, I thought there would be a good chance that there'd be somebody down here in this warehouse or in these buildings. Turns out there's nobody. So, like I said, let's just go ahead and kind of move forward. So, we are down now to five people. So, let's just see where I end up. Uh, I'm over here on this side, down to five people. Uh, there ends up being somebody who's right over here, but unfortunately, I can't take shots at Atticus because uh, the tree is in my way. I don't, I don't see him. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't get uh, to take any shots at this guy. So we'll start it back up. We're at two times. So DTS uh, A Dilly, um, he actually had a really good game. Uh, I don't really have time to go back and kind of show everything that he did, but um, the situation where this guy was, when we were down to like uh, even 17 people, there was only like two or three of us over in this area to begin with, uh, and everybody else was over here. And... Um, DTS did a really good job in putting himself into some really good spots to just start, uh, start, uh, just to start taking people out. Um, played a really good game. Uh, just don't really have time to show you everything that he did really well. So let's go ahead and just kind of show you what happens here. So we're down to four people, and I'm somewhere over here. And I'm getting ready to have to cross over into the next circle, and I've got to cross the road. That is where I thought I was going to uh, end up paying the price. Um, you can see how much damage I'm taking, and I thought I was going to get taken down uh, right there. And let me slow it back down. Okay, so the situation uh, as it currently is... I am taking shots at this guy. He also was taking some shots at me. Now, I get a little bit lucky because all of a sudden, over on the other side, Atticus is over here. 
and he actually sees uh, Big Stank, and he's taking shots at him as well. So two people are shooting at Stank, and he says, okay, en enough of this. Uh, let me kind of get out of here. So he takes off running and runs up here to get to some cover uh, and to heal up. He wants to engage me, but he just knows, like, okay, I don't know where the other guy is, so he's just going to kind of disengage at the moment. This guy takes a shot, uh, or chucks a grenade. Um, the last guy we see up there is Dilly. Now, here's the thing. Kind of pause it and look. So, when I'm in the position that I'm in, I know that there's a guy on my left, because it's the guy that I was shooting at, and I was positive that he ran up onto these rocks. The other guy that I know is somewhere over to my right because I could hear those gunshots, but I don't know where the last guy is. Excuse me, it turns out to be Dilly, but I don't know where this guy is. So the only real mistake to kind of look at in this game um, is a decision that uh, Big Stank, love the name, uh, ends up making. Uh, he's over here, he's healing up, he's taking painkillers and just trying to get situated now there's 40 seconds left to move up into the next circle now i'm right down here as you can see i'm <coughs> excuse me i'm down there in my ghillie suit i'm positive that this guy is exactly where he is i know that there's another guy over somewhere over to my right don't know where the last guy is so i know that the guy i'm going to have to get into a fight with is going to end up being uh big stank now, here's the mistake that this guy makes. He knows that I am somewhere over in this area. He knows this. The problem is he doesn't know where I'm at. If he had moved back to where he was, this would have been the best position for him to be in because if he had been right here, he would have been able to kind of get behind this tree, have cover, lean out into a shot, and catch me as I'm having to run across to get into the circle. Instead of making that decision, he makes sort of a bad decision, and he jumps down from these rocks onto this ledge, and I can hear him. I can already hear him. I know that he's right above me, and so I'm just trying to wait. And he jumps down. I end up seeing him. I take shots, hit him in the back. I'm finally able to get him down. I raid him real quick because the only thing in this game that I didn't have uh, was actually some boots. I, I couldn't really find any. So this guy luckily had some uh, painkillers. So I'm able to kind of raid him, get the stuff. And so I move down here. Now, the whole time that I move down here, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is I don't know where this last guy is and I'm thinking to myself there's a chance that he's right up here at least I, at first I thought that he would be up there when I realized that I don't hear anybody over to my left uh, up on this little ridge here that's when I know okay he's not he's not up there because there's no real cover so if there's no cover and I don't hear any footsteps then I know that guy is not there now, the other guy uh, that was taking shots earlier at Stank, uh, he's sitting over here, and that's the thing. I knew that he was somewhere over there. So this is where we kind of enter into what was going through my head at this point. Because you can see where this next circle is, and I know that I'm going to have to get into it. And I'm probably the one who's going to be the furthest away. So the situation as it is, is... I'm trying to say to myself which direction is the best place to go. So if you ever find yourself in this situation, here's what you got to kind of say to yourself. You know that there's somebody over to the right. You have no idea what's sort of on the left here. So you've got the known on your right. You have the unknown on your left. It is better for you to move into the known rather than the unknown. The reason I say that is because if I move to the right, I'm going to already kind of be looking specifically in just a couple areas for whoever's over on my right. If I move left, I I don't know what direction to really kind of be looking. Now, obviously, I know that I got to look to in the circle, 
but I don't really know the best place for somebody to be up here. So the thing that makes the most sense is for me to kind of move to the right to engage whoever's going to be on my right. So that's the decision that I end up making. And I hope that makes sense. It, to me, to me, it makes sense, uh, basically what I'm saying. Um, if I just have a choice of the known or the unknown, I, I'm going to try to move to where I think I can engage somebody at some kind of a distance. So I'm looking left, and this is, you know, we're down to 35 seconds. And I keep thinking, okay, there's a chance that there's somebody here, but I don't hear anybody, so that is not the direction that I want to go at this point. So I start to move to the right, we'll kind of look at it from my first person point of view. I keep looking left just to double check and make sure because I know I've got cover right there on my right because of the hill. So I slowly start to move over, start to move up the hill, and uh, I'm looking for whoever's going to be over here. And I'm trying to go slow so I'm not making uh, a ton of noise uh, either. And so I get up there, I see the guy, I switch over to the MK, and I'm able to get that guy down. So I hope that kind of makes sense about moving into the known versus the unknown, because here's what I know now after I take that guy down. I know that the last guy is not over here. I also know that the last guy is not over here. So that means the only place that this guy actually can be is going to be right in front of me. He has to be right over here. It's the only thing that makes sense because I haven't seen anyone on this ridge. I haven't heard any footsteps and there's no way that the last guy is over here on this side when I just took this guy out. Those two, if, 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 the, if the last guy is over on that side, those two would have already been fighting. So the only thing that makes sense is for this guy to actually be right in front of me, which is why I'm now looking uh, in this direction as I get up here. So kind of looking, he's got to be up here somewhere. And I take damage, hop down real quick just to kind of get out of the way, move up. And that was a really, really bad fight that he and I had, uh, that Dilly and I had. Um, neither one of us sort of let up to let the gun reset. Um, I knew that I was really in kind of a world of hurt because I had already taken some damage. And you can kind of see, um, <laughs> I mean, how much health I've got left. So one more bullet and it's over for me and Dilly's going to pull out the, the win. Uh, I end up getting lucky and just kind of doing more damage with the AKM. Uh, and now that they've upped the AKM, it's wonderful. So at the end of the day, uh, that was not the best firefight between the two of us, but I end up coming out the victor. So I hope you kind of learn a, a, a little something right here with this game um, and just trying to analyze the circle, figuring out where the shots are coming from, and then moving into the known versus the unknown. Um, it actually makes more sense. Uh, if you move into the unknown, you're not 100% sure where somebody could be laying down, where they could be moving, et cetera, et cetera. If I move to the right, I know where someone basically is going to end up being, and I'm probably going to end up being able to get some shots off and not sort of be taken by surprise, which is what you deal with when you move into a place where you, you don't know really kind of what the situation is. So that's this game. Let's jump into the next one, and uh, we will catch you next time. So this guy right here, uh, he sees... This guy over here, we'll put this down into regular. So the problem with this is he's trying to snipe with an SKS at this point with a uh, two scope, and it's just it's really difficult to do. Um, I mean, maybe if you're on, you know, if you're shroud or somebody, then yeah, this is an easy shot. But for the rest of us, it's not so easy with an SKS um, at this point. So this guy is basically getting into these shots. Now he's doing a good job and kind of using the terrain a little bit, but unfortunately for this guy, I hear all the shots, so I am coming. So I see this guy, I could hear him getting into these shots. I see him, I saw him duck down as well. 
He's taking more damage. I'm not aware of that. All I know is I need to get up here and take this guy out. Boom, boom, boom. Take him down. I don't have any boost, so I raid this guy really quickly. Now, I get lucky because, uh, you know, I knew where the circle was going to be. So I'm raiding this guy. I'm grabbing everything that I'm going to need. And then I take off running. And uh, I'm not taking as much damage as it actually looks like. Because I, I knew that I was going to make it. I wasn't worried about it. So I get up here and I'm in a really good spot. And sit down, heal up. So there are 13 of us left. Now, here's the best part about, you know... The strategic way that I play, I there is a 0% chance that I'm going to give up this hill. Um, that's all I truly know at this point is I, I'm lucky with the circle right here. As you can see, you can see where I'm at. Uh, and the nice thing is you can see this blue line. So I know that anyone who's going to try to come up here is going to be coming up this road. Um, so I will hear them long before they ever see me. Um, so I continuously just try to crawl up here because I'm also worried at this point that there's going to be somebody else at the top of this hill. Turns out there's nobody uh, at the top here. And I can hear all these uh, fights going on. Uh, so I know a majority of the people are down here in Rozok. I do not like Rozok. I, I, I hate the layout of this city. Um, strategically, I think it's a... Uh, <laughs> I, I do not like to be in the buildings in Rozok. I don't like to be in buildings all that much to begin with, but especially in Rozok. If, you're, if, if you have a final circle that's ending in this city, the last thing you want to do is to be in a building because you have no advantage compared to somebody who is outside of a building. They get to see everything and you don't. Uh, and that's just sort of because of the layout. You can see how far apart uh, the distance is between a lot of these buildings and your limited view because of the elevation, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, elevation-wise, it's, it's, it's a great strategic place, but the disadvantage is being foolish enough to actually be in a building. So try not to do that. So we get down to nine people. We still have a bunch of people over here by the school. We have a bunch of people uh, uh, north of Rozak. Everybody is kind of working their way down. So I'm just taking advantage this at this point of being exactly where I'm at. So I've already taken down one guy. Uh, I picked up a lot of good stuff off the guy that I took out. So I am just kind of chilling here for a minute because I want to see where this next circle is going to be. And lo and behold, as you can tell, the next circle is right next to me. So I, again, for the way that I play, I'm, I'm sort of done moving at this point. I've got a minute to go. I don't need to leave. I know, I'm, I know I'm in the next circle. And not only am I in the next circle, I am at the top of a hill which is all the advantage in the world. So these guys, uh, there was a really good fight over here between uh, all these guys that were over here. Jarhead comes out on top. Uh, these guys are over here. MDM, aha. He unfortunately does not see this guy coming up. And this guy uses his M4, takes him out. And I'm trying to remember if he comes out on top here. Because I think he gets into a fight with Jarhead. And he comes up on the losing end of it. So all these guys at this point are having to move down. It's down to three seconds. So... It, it, some people would criticize this and say they should have been moving towards the circle earlier. It's like, no, these guys are good players. They know what they're doing. Um, you hug the circle as long as you can. That way you don't have people coming up behind you. Uh, Jarhead does not see this guy. He almost gets Jarhead down. He's so close to getting him down. The problem for... Aha is he gets taken out um, because he's not in the circle and he's got no cover. 
Jarhead takes a ton of damage there. We are now down to four people. And Little Bird, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Because uh, Little Bird sort of makes a mistake here. Um, it's not that he's doing anything inherently wrong. He's in this building. Um, you know, at this point, he's got a minute to go. And we'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, so you can just kind of see. He comes out of this building. He is now... Where did he end up? So he's worked into this building. So he's trying to take advantage. The problem is it's Rozak. You can't see anything in here. L look at the disadvantage that this guy has. It, everything's elevated. He doesn't know where anybody is. This is the problem being in a building in Rozak. Because uh, he's looking in every direction, but he's limited in where he can actually see. It looks like he has a wide open area to look. But the truth is, he really doesn't. So he takes damage there. It's not a big ordeal. But it's one second to go. He's got one second. And now he has got to book it. And he's struggling to get up and over. So now he is running down here. Still at sort of a disadvantage because anybody could be behind any wall, any building. He doesn't know because he hasn't been able to kind of see the playing field at this point. And uh, that's when Jarhead takes out that guy. And he starts moving up here. And this is the mistake that he ends up making. He can hear this guy in here. So I'm going to just call him Luis. <laughs> He knows he doesn't get him down. Now, Luigi almost killed himself with that grenade. He didn't. Uh, it kind of worked out that he, he didn't get killed. But here's the thing. Um, he knows that this guy is in there. And he keeps leaving him alone. So, the, the you'll basically see what happens. It's like, if you know where an enemy is and there are four of you left... This guy's in this building. You, this is your most immediate threat. Because you know he's there. He knows you're there. Um, and he's only got two ways to get in and out of this building. Um, and he ignores him. And I don't know why he ignored him. I really don't know why he ignored the guy in that building. He gets taken out. And it's like, guys, if you are down to four people and you've got the immediate threat and you know where he is, you know, don't screw around. you got to take that guy out. Uh, so Jarhead ends up moving up here. I hear him. I see him right there. Boom, boom, boom. Take him down. And now it's heads up. And I know where the last guy is. I know that Luigi is down at the bottom of the hill. Because, uh, you know, I could hear that firefight earlier, so I'm looking for him. I don't see him. I was pretty sure he was by that crate. That's what I was positive. Couldn't exactly see him. So I know that he sees me. So I run over here, and then I try to run to the top of the hill. And I can't believe I didn't see him right there. It was just sort of the way the hill worked. So I chuck a grenade in that area, because I knew that's where he was. I don't see him again. Obviously, you know where he is. Um, you can see him. So I moved down because I was pretty sure the guy was going to try to raid, uh, or move, move to the top. And this guy, Luigi, he did a great job right here. He really did. And it just sort of, bad luck. He made the best decision that he could possibly make. So we kind of look at it from his perspective. He doesn't know where I'm at when he chucks that grenade, by the way. Um... He assumes he knows where I'm at, but he's not 100%. So, he, you know, if the crate's not there, I probably killed the guy right then and there because I'm elevated. He doesn't have as much health. But the crate gives him cover, so he doesn't really die. He knows that I'm there now at the top of the hill, and this is where he makes a great decision. Uh, he doesn't have as much health. He knows he's got to try to outflank me. And so he runs around the side, which is what he's not aware of because we play in first-person perspective. I don't play third-person. Uh, he tries to flank me, and it's just too late. 
It's just too late at that point. So this guy made the best decision that he could possibly make uh, to try to get me. Uh, it just wasn't enough. So uh, I end up getting a three kill chicken dinner right there. Uh, again, just kind of taking advantage of the top of the hill, trying to use it to the best of my ability. And uh, it just worked out, especially getting as many circles as I did that allowed me to stay up there without having to uh, basically get down off the hill.